Released by Team Ninja in 2022 on the PlayStation 4 and 5, PC and Xbox One and series, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin would be a dark fantasy action RPG made in celebration of the series' 35th anniversary. Directed by Daisuke Inoue, Hiroya Usuda, and Nobumichi Kumabe, and written by Kazushiga Nojima and Tomoko Kanemake, the game would tell an alternate history prequel to the events of the original Final Fantasy. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, a scowling stranger named Jack arrives at the Kingdom of Cornelia, where he pauses and senses two other strangers bearing dark glowing crystals like him, all with the same mission to kill Chaos. Introducing themselves as Jed and Ash, the trio team up to appeal to the King for the tasks of hunting down Chaos, but the Minister is skeptical. Asking the group to prove themselves first, they spend the next few weeks slaying infamous monsters, becoming friends along the way. As ever, Jack is impatient to kill Chaos, as they recall the words of a prophecy wherein darkness shrouds the world as it decays, but four warriors of light will rise to save it. The Minister is still troubled that they are only a party of three, and their crystals do not shine with light, but the group counters they are willing and able to fight Chaos regardless. The King is also doubtful, but Jack replies his desire to kill Chaos is not a dream, but a primal need, persuading the King to grant them passage to confront Chaos. As they journey forth to the shrine where Chaos waits, the group is spotted by Princess Sarah, who has taken a liking to Jack, asking them to keep an eye out for a knight named Garland who went after Chaos ten years ago but never returned. She adds, it's odd that no one believes her, claiming Garland never existed, and the group notices their crystals begin reacting to something for no apparent reason. Moving on, they open the way to the Chaos Shrine, forcing their way through the undead as they head to the tallest tower in the imposing keep. Spotting a tall knight upon the throne, they wonder if they finally found Chaos, but the knight resembling the missing Garland replies he is to become Chaos. Proclaiming themselves the Warriors of Light here to kill Chaos, the two sides clash as Jack proves more than enough to emerge victorious. Defeated, Darkness leaves the knight, revealing a young girl who is quick to turn her blade to the group. Jack pauses her, revealing his crystal is getting a reaction from her as she takes out her own crystal and introduces herself as Neon. Jed wonders why she sought to become Chaos, and Neon explains she set out with allies on the same mission as them, but after everyone else in her group died along the way, she realized Chaos isn't a man or a monster, but merely a manufactured myth. In truth, Chaos is a boogeyman made up to be blamed for the problems afflicting the world, and to give people hope that the world can be saved simply from someone defeating him. For this reason, Neon tried to surrender herself to darkness and become Chaos, so a band of heroes could defeat her and at least prove the fairy tale is false. However, Jack refuses to believe this, turning around and tuning her out with music from his MP3 player. Leaving the shrine, Jack takes out his wireless earbuds, telling them all he can sense chaos and is confident he's still out in the world somewhere. Neon insists on joining them, believing she is the fourth hero of light and wanting to see if chaos is real after all, as the group accepts her. Returning to Cornelia, Neon finds it awfully suspicious they each have large gaps in their memory, almost by design in exchange for their strength, but Jack insists it's easier to focus with less attachment. Neon also adds she was last in Cornelia ten years ago, but feels like it was just yesterday. Debriefing the King, even though Chaos wasn't there, he is glad four warriors are now assembled per prophecy, reciting Lucan's prophecy of four crystals now corrupted by darkness. The King adds that if they rekindle the light of the crystals, they can claim they killed Chaos, admitting Chaos is indeed just a fantasy made up as a final resort to give people hope. Begging the party of warriors with names of four characters or less, the King gets a reluctant agreement from Jack as the Minister points them in the direction of Pravika for more information on their locations. Crossing Cornelia Bridge, the group pauses to reflect on their new mission, but find that in Pravika they are not welcomed warmly as the citizens have not forgiven the king for sending countless knights on doomed crusades to rekindle the crystals. The town has also fallen on hard times since the mayor died, and now pirate captain BK takes care of the town's needs. To the side, a mysterious observer called The Fool makes note how the pirate's cave they enter is an echo of a similar Sestasha pirate hideout from Dimension 14. Boarding BK's ship, they battle the Buccaneer and beat him into revealing the whereabouts of a dark elf named Astos who can tell them about the crystals. The Fool notes the western keep they sail to is modeled after the Emperor's Palamecia Castle from Dimension 2, as the party scales the ramparts, destroys its defenses, and defeats the Black Knight within. Applauding their battle is Astos, who calls them all out by name, but Jack doesn't care and is only concerned about the crystals. Amused, Astos pulls up a hologram of the world map, quickly pointing to a nearby tower where the Wind Crystal lies, warning them the journey will be dangerous. 
Jack asks him about chaos, and Astus explains chaos is darkness given form and purpose, responsible for extinguishing the crystals, and is the only one capable of restoring them. Glad to hear chaos is real like he thought, Jack and group venture through wetlands that the Fool notes are crafted in line with Dimension 13's Sunleth Waterscape, as Neon begins to understand and appreciate the group more. Beyond, the Fool mentions the tower prototype built here is modeled after the crystal tower found in Dimension 3, as the group notes a strange amount of white bats headed in the same direction. Tricks like invisible floors and magic beams, and powerful monsters like Gigas and Chimeras adorn the crystalline rooms, as the team finds neither chaos nor crystal waiting for them. However, Neon recognizes where they are, as a computer comes online, identifies them, and transports them elsewhere. Waking up, Jack sees a scrambled image of a woman taking crystals from a pair of bodies before moving ahead in a flying fortress that, to the side, the Fool says is based on the Advanced Tower of Babel from Dimension 4. Working past the cutting-edge security, they approach the crystal and the monster guarding it, noting their crystals now reacting in an unusual manner. Taking hers out, Neon now sees the mysterious woman from before, and Jack snaps her out of it, telling her to ignore the scars left behind by the past. Meanwhile, the Fiend says it is one of four Servants of Chaos and Master of this crystal, as Neon knows it to be called Tiamat, and after defeating it, the darkness lifts to reveal the mysterious woman from before. She introduces herself as Sophia, mentioning her group tried and failed to fight the darkness, as the darkness now leaves the crystal and attempts to enter Neon. Sophia holds forth a crystal to absorb the dark mist, and Jack is confused about what just happened, though Sophia isn't sure either, only that the crystals seem able to consume the mist. A console now raises, and Sophia approaches it, mentioning she has memories of having been here many times before, including having died here many times before. All the same, she states she is driven to kill Chaos, and for that, the group agrees to let her join along. The computer reveals the locations of the Fire and Earth Crystals next, marking their path forward. Opting to retrieve the Fire Crystal first, they pass through the aptly named Wicked Arbor, which the Fool mentions to the side is named for a similar evil forest from Dimension 9. Putting down a Great Malboro in their way, the darkness it leaves behind strikes Jack, who now has a memory meeting with someone who gives him a Dark Crystal, telling him it will store his memories within, and instructs him to bring it back. His friends shake him out of his stupor as they press on into Mount Gulg, where the Fool states it has taken after the Fire Cavern from Dimension 8. Crossing the Rivers of Fire, they cross blades with a Merilith Fiend next, and upon beating her, they are surprised to see a phantom left behind by the mist as it turns to hand Jack its own Dark Crystal. The darkness from the Fire Crystal is then taken in by Neon's Crystal, as unbearable heat begins to emanate from the Fire Crystal, just as the group is warped back to the Flying Fortress. Wondering if the White Bats saved them, they head to the Earth Crystal next, while the Fool notes the frozen climb is inspired by Mount Gagazet from Dimension 10, facing a fearsome dragon zombie that doesn't stay dead easily. After absorbing a mist, Jack experiences a memory of being in a strange room meeting several strangers, though struggles to remember their faces. Closing in on the Earth Crystal, the Fool observes the ornate cavern to be based on the Tomb of Wraith Wall from Dimension 12, complete with a deadly demon wall. Finding the corrupted crystal, Jack is hit with a vision of a stranger who looks just like Ash passing on his crystal to Jack before falling, but Jack is snapped out of it by Ash just as a mighty lich encroaches upon them, and Jack has no patience for its monologues. As the Fiend falls, they cannot identify the body left behind through the static, but Ash does collect the lingering dark mist with his crystal all the same. The cavern begins to collapse as Jack pushes Neon and Sophia away from danger, and afterwards, he notices Ash has glimpsed his own past, who mentions he cannot recall the friends that died under his watch. Returning to Astos, the Dark Elf comments that the Dark Mist can drag them into the past or even turn them into monsters, and Ash thinks the phantom they saw after defeating Lich was him, either from the past or future. Astos then brings up that they may have noticed various locales or structures that don't seem to belong in Cornelia, like this tower they're in, explaining they are experiments discarded and left behind by Lufenia. Continuing, he reveals Lufenia as a mysterious nation that created this world with advanced technology before the entire society vanished. With the Water Crystal their final goal, they venture into a colossal ship of war borrowed from Dimension 5 per the Fool, as Jed tries to say something but is ignored by Jack. After fighting a futuristic Crayclaw, Jack moves in to claim the mist himself, but Jed steps in to block him. As they both get hit by the mist, they see a shared memory where Jed is honored to be a warrior of light coming from humble beginnings, and Jack still considers him a friend and appreciates his boldness. Journeying on, they find a facility regulating the power of water, unknowing the design was taken from Dimension 7 and a similar reactor used to harvest the planet's energy, per the Fool. Neon now interrupts them, confessing that unlike the rest of them, she was born here in Cornelia and now remembers the person who gave her a crystal was Astos within the Chaos Shrine right before she surrendered to the darkness. 
Regardless, she's still committed to the mission and the group still considers her one of them. Confronted by the final fiend, Kraken mocks the group for merely collecting the crystals and not yet knowing what to do with them. Undeterred, the group prevails, and this time, the mist reveals to Jack a memory of being explained to by a Lufenian that the Black Crystals store their personal memories as well as experiences and is essential when they transfer lest they lose everything. As Jed collects the mist from the Water Crystal, they see another phantom left behind by Kraken, who looks like Jed, pointing them to the danger of the area beginning to flood now. Warped back now, while they have rekindled all the crystals, Jack is still disturbed that he still senses chaos waiting somewhere. All the same, they choose to return to the king to report their success, but upon entering the city, all they are greeted with is an angry mob. Repeating the prophecy declared four warriors of light in their group numbers five, the crowd accuses one among them to be an imposter. What more, darkness looms closer to the city, leading some to think they were all servants of chaos. Visiting the king, he is also upset, as now instead of the four elements being absent, they are wildly out of control. While the people continue to lay blame on the group, Princess Sarah vouches for them, saying this is just a transitory phase and they need to focus on guiding the people during the uncertain times. A guard now interrupts them, announcing BK and his pirates, alongside several monsters, are raiding the city. Stepping out to see the townsfolk being slaughtered, Jack and the group choose to aid the guards in fending off the intruder. As Jack strikes down BK, the pirate says they were all possessed by the darkness the moment the crystals went out of control. He adds he was looking for Astos, but the Dark Elf was nowhere to be found, warning Jack Astos is hiding a dark heart and a darker secret. Dying, BK tells them to follow the bats as they work for Astos and warns them not to give in to hatred. Spotting some of Astos' white bats, Sophia mentions in all of her fragmented memories she has never made it this far before, so the path ahead is unknown territory. Their trail leads them to the Ancient's Tower, which the fool notes is based on Delkfoot's Tower from Dimension 11. Finding Astos, they save him just in time from an iron giant, but Jack finds his crystals unable to consume the mist. Instead, he sees a memory when the Lufenian informs him the storage space in a crystal is limited, and he is to cease activity and be extracted when it's full, working with Astos as his contact. Irritated at something, Jack demands to know who the Lufenian was that gave him his crystal and where the White Room is. Ash replies that they're strangers, meaning they are strangers to this world and to themselves. Astos promises to answer his questions, but first directs their attention to the castle that has appeared outside, asking them to handle that first. Stepping into a very modern skyscraper that the Fool explains is based on Insomnia Citadel from Dimension 15, Jack pauses and is shocked to no longer feel his drive to kill Chaos anymore. Working through the various technological marvels, they are surprised to find a behemoth in here as well, allowing its dark mist to reveal more of their lost memories. Jack remembers when speaking to the Lufenian that while they separated their world from this one, they still wished to monitor it and balance the light and darkness. If a world was teetering towards destruction, they would inject darkness to fix things or reset the world if need be, while Jack laughs that they are all actually Lufenians too. Following the White Bats, they find themselves on Terra Tortura, a floating continent storing massive quasi-magic energy, which according to the Fool, is still referred to in Legend in Dimension 6. Sophia figures the Lufenians monitoring the world already know what's going on and think Astos is the one reporting things to them. As they search for the Dark Elf, they figure the darkness the Lufenians send is created here and also a catalyst for change, causing the corruption in people and animals, as well as dimming the crystal's light. At the same time, they acknowledge their role was that of regulators to maintain balance between light and dark, as too much of either is destructive for the world. Destroying a warring triad of statues, they also consider the reason Lufenians were injecting darkness into the world was not just them reducing darkness, but someone like Princess Sarah was adding too much light, suspecting she also has a crystal somehow. Making it to Astos, he congratulates them on balancing the world this time and is prepared to answer their questions. Jack first asks who he is, and Astos seems a bit hurt he doesn't know, but states anyway that while he is not a Lufenian, the White Bats with him are former Lufenians that he turned into bats and forced into servitude. He adds he has shouldered an eternity of sadness, resentment, and hatred for the Lufenians, and when Jack fails to recognize him one more time, Astos snaps and surrenders himself to the darkness. He reveals he was originally born in Cornelia and traveled with the Lufenians across the plains, and says he returned reborn, turning into Ultima Weapon Origin. The Lufenians mutated him into an organic reconnaissance unit meant to serve them, tasked to monitor the world and the reach of chaos, and measure the strength of light and darkness. Upon defeating Astos, Jack recalls asking the Lufenian why they had to forget and was only fed a vague self-righteous reason in return. 
When he first met Astos, the Dark Elf revealed his kind were mass-produced to serve the Lufenians in their task, and despite being told not to, Jack befriended him as they journeyed together. Later, Jack would recruit Astos to be his accomplice in trying to change things, and Astos and Ash were only too eager to join the coup. As Jack returned to the Lufenians, Astos told him the extraction point was almost always the Chaos Shrine, and in response, Jack promised to fight and save Astos as well as not forget his promise, but a sad Astos didn't want to get his hopes up. Jack now realizes he's about to lose a dear friend, as Astos blames the Lufenians for erasing his memory. He still hates the Lufenians for this, and resents Jack for getting anyway, and though Jack asks for forgiveness, Astos sighs that he has no forgiveness left in his heart. Staying focused, he tells them the white bats he trapped will die when he dies, and their combined hatred and rage will merge into a veil of darkness that will cover the world. He tells him to kill every beast that will emerge from that darkness, as chaos occurs when darkness and emotion become one. With his last breath, Astos urges them to protect Cornelia and punish the Lufenians for their arrogance as he passes away, releasing a tremendous amount of darkness. Returning to Cornelia to see it under siege again, Jack promises to do right by Astos, and the rest of the group swear to support Jack. Taking down every monster they see, they find they are too late when they discover the bodies of the king, queen, and minister among the dead. Fortunately, Sarah is safe, but refuses to stay put as the darkness mixes with the terror and fear outside to form chaos. Jack knocks her out in a light punch and tells the others he'll be the tip of the spear in carving a path out of the city to safety. As Jack saves as many ungrateful citizens as he can along the way, Sarah rallies what small hope remains in the people before the darkness corrupts most of them and they begin killing each other. Jack is too late to save Sarah from being struck down, and dying in his arms, Sarah drops a crystal she had that cracks and revives the memory of when the two of them fell in love with each other. Jack also revealed his last name to be Garland, and was the one to give her a dark crystal, telling her he was going to change the world for the better. Asking if he succeeded in changing the world for the better, Sarah dies as more darkness is released. Jack now recalls when Astos told them the Lufenians rip holes in reality, then dispatch strangers as regulators, and should balance fail to be achieved, they then reset the world. The reason is because the Lufenians cannot control chaos, meaning it is their weakness, and because chaos is formed from emotions, is why the Lufenians wipe the memories of strangers, so their emotions cannot overwhelm them. The Lufenians admit darkness is a controlled substance, and should it mix with powerful negative emotion, it becomes chaos, and anyone corrupted by it will be barred from returning. As the group realizes Jack is the last one among them to harness chaos, they also realize he needs to be pushed over his emotional brink. Now attacking Jack in unison, they explain chaos is the final destination for any stranger that falls in the battle against darkness, as evident by each of the fiends they have fought so far being previous versions of themselves harnessing chaos. In fact, they were never warriors of light, and instead disposable pawns of the Lufenians meant to fall over and over. Thanks to Astos' guidance, they are all alive at this point in time, and all that's left is for Jack to master the darkness too. In anguish at losing Sarah and now being forced to kill all of his friends, Jack falls to despair and rage, setting out now for the extraction point at Chaos Shrine. Discovering Astos' research and notes, Jack learns his friend was the Fool alias recording everything he observed, including how the world is just Lufenia's laboratory to conduct experiments in light and dark, with every living thing within just a lab animal. To avoid its unending fate of being reset and toyed with for the sake of building Lufenia's utopia, Jack previously sought to send it spiraling into chaos so that it may break the cycle and be master of its own fate. He also learns the dark crystals they hold not only erase their memories, but store them outside time and space, able to exist forever in the world, and even attract lost memories from previous iterations. The four crystals themselves are energy matrices that balance the raging primeval energies of the world and maintain harmony. However, they also absorb the emotions of the world, and that balance can be tipped, warping it into chaos. Astos also mentions he found Neon and gave her the fifth Dark Crystal, allowing her to be reborn and using her as another hidden piece on the board to usurp the Lufenians. Knowing only the strong will can withstand the transformation into a fiend, Astos allowed a sixth crystal to be given to Sarah through Jack, knowing her powerful light clashing with the Darkness Crystal would be needed for Jack as well. Finding a warp device prepared for him by Astos, Jack forces his way past their contamination barrier and enters Lufenian's pocket dimension. The Lufenians are shocked by this turn of events, realizing Astos was a traitor and keeping them in the dark. Quickly, they attempt to reboot the world to deal with the corrupt agent before their worlds combine again. As the Lufenians attempt to crystallize everything as part of the reinitialization process, Jack smashes the light so fast only darkness remains. 
The darkness then manifests as a single being in some of the world's fears, calling itself Chaos, and Jack is overjoyed to finally kill Chaos and claim that title for himself. Absorbing all of darkness into himself, Jack tells the Lufenians he quits as their agent and they accept his resignation and attempt to isolate him. However, Jack warns them that as long as they still intend to dump darkness into this world, he'll bide his time and gather his strength and use that interdimensional link to return to Lufenia and burn it down. Scoffing, the Lufenians doubt he can keep up with their technological advancements and reminds him warriors of light will rise up to strike him down in the meanwhile. Jack counters that Cornelia never had Warriors of Light and it was just their final fantasy against despair, but then an idea occurs to him, and laughing, he tells the Lufenians not to bother sending any more strangers. Just then, Jack finds himself pulled back in time, but doesn't mind as this is part of his new plan to wrest control of the world from the Lufenians and grow the Warriors of Light himself. Taking a seat on the throne in Chaos Shrine, he looks around and sees his friends, already as the Four Fiends of Chaos, and Ash, now Lich, welcomes him back, their memories intact thanks to the darkness accumulated here. Jed, now Kraken, mentions they are currently 2,000 years before the king they know takes reign, and Neon, now Merilith, explains they used darkness to pull Jack back in time. Sophia, now Tiamat, affirms Lufenia cannot reach them here, and as beings of chaos they are outside Lufenian control, and smirking, Jack tells them his plan to train the Warriors of Light themselves. They thank Astos for enabling this plan for them to regain their memories, and Sarah's necessary sacrifice to spark chaos, as they now patiently begin their 2000 year plan to protect this world until they can free it. In time, Jack would wait for the Warriors of Light to be born in Cornelia, appearing as Garland to slaughter the kingdom's knights and kidnap Princess Sarah. As predicted, the Warriors of Light would rise to the occasion and meet him at his shrine, and each time Jack would test them until they became strong enough with the light to shatter the shackles of darkness Lufenia has on the world. During one such test, Jack is disappointed how weak the light still is, and after learning of another source of light from Astos' notes, ventures into the dragon's cavern to meet Bahamut who has been slumbering. Calling himself the Master of Trials, Bahamut asks them to present proof of their courage and strength in exchange for his blessing of untold power. Curious why they all manifested chaos, Bahamut listens to their story and the intent behind the Lufenians, as well as Jack's plan to train the Warriors of Light. Understanding, he wishes to test their metal himself, and after they do so, return with a rat's tail, Bahamut explains the token changes shape from world to world, so don't take it literally. Content with the proof, Bahamut shares he is originally from another dimension, where he was worshipped as a god by humans until they backstabbed him, noting the will of humans can topple even a god. Once slain, his soul drifted between dimensions until it was summoned to this one that we doesn't know why or by whom. After the group passes all of Bahamut's trials, the dragon renders his power at their disposal, but Jack merely wishes for him to help them find a suitable warrior of light. Once he does, he wants Bahamut to use his trials and powers to help them get strong enough to kill Jack. Amused, Bahamut agrees to the deal, and when the next iteration of Warriors of Light arrive to challenge him, Jack is pleased with the progress now, though they are still found wanting. Meanwhile, a Lufenian notices a singularity overlapping dimensions in the form of the warrior Gilgamesh, thinking to leverage him against Jack, aware of his deal with Bahamut. Gilgamesh then finds himself unknowingly brought to Chaos Shrine, trying to find his way home, and the group detects his arrival. Clashing with him on a big bridge, Gilgamesh thanks them for calming him down as he explains he was suddenly filled with incredible power and thought to try connecting dimensions with it to get home. However, he now senses there is another great power at work unraveling the dimensions. Gilgamesh surprises them by name dropping Garland, but denies any knowledge of the Lufenians. Rather, when he was traveling across dimensions in time, he encountered a man named Garland who was obsessed with battle, wondering if it's someone Jack has yet to become. Gilgamesh tries to leave, but keeps finding himself turned around and battling the group, and both sides think this is the tampering of the Lufenians. Not long after, a deadly war machine appears through Gilgamesh's linking of dimensions against his will, and while the group makes quick work of it, Gilgamesh worries the real foe is willing to endanger entire dimensions just to defeat them. As they conquer dozens of floors of a rift labyrinth, back with the Lufenians, a Mughal spies on their next scheme. Worried, it travels to Bahamut and the group, revealing it was the guiding spirit that helped Bahamut get here, though the dragon senses there is much more to the creature. It hurries to Jack, saying it needs Chaos's help to prevent the Lufenians from erasing this dimension, and agreeing the group is transported to the edge of space-time called Central where the Mastermind is. They are interrupted by Emperor Mateus from Dimension 2, who says he spotted the unusual Mughal in his world and followed it here, where he now claims Central and its crystals for himself. 
Jack is unimpressed and the two dark rulers clash as the Emperor steps away, somehow recognizing Jack just like Gilgamesh did, as well as also wielding chaos. The Mughal chooses to reveal it comes from a future where warriors from multiple dimensions are locked in endless combat, but with the help of two gods were able to defeat the beasts responsible and restore peace to the dissident world. One of those warriors was named Garland, but it wasn't Jack, though they are very similar. Finally confronting Luthanian behind it all, named Nil, Jack recognizes her as the same one who also put him on his mission in the first place. She admits Jack has been a hindrance, and is still confident Luthanians will still prevail in expelling him and working towards building their utopia. Jack dares her to try, and Nil produces a dimensional matrix capable of binding space, time, and matter. She adds they have been using it to open rifts to bring in phenomena from other worlds, or erase them entirely. As a demonstration, she calls forth Omega, a god-slaying machine from another dimension, and Jack edges out a win to defeat it. Amused, Nil states she can create countless more, producing a crystal and summoning three more copies of Omega made of crystal that the Mughal recognizes from their dimensions as mannequins. Claiming her army can finally kill Chaos, she combines the crystal and dimensional matrix, intending to end all life and return the world to nothingness so as to start anew. Using this new power to ascend into a more powerful form, Nil attacks Jack, who transforms into Garland as well, and uses the power of Chaos and the four elements to cleave her in two. Dying, Nil spits out how things aren't over yet as Jack cuts her off and shatters her. Her crystal falls down, but Jack walks away, dismissing it as Lufenian junk, and the Mughal hesitantly agrees. Their business done, Jack asks the Mughal to take them home, but pausing, the Mughal brings up that in another timeline, the group became one with Lufenia's crystal and became legends. So, it's surprising here they chose to be on another path where their journey and struggle will be forgotten, as no one will know their sacrifice to return the world to the people in it. Jack and the group are not bothered and laugh, but they are interrupted as Emperor Mateus arrives to pick up Lufenia's crystal and dimensional matrix, combining and claiming both for himself. Clashing again, Jack's chaos forces the Emperor to wield his own, but it's not enough as Jack beats him, prevents him from running again, and shatters his ambitions. All of Mateus' magic and the crystal end up being absorbed by Jack, who marvels at the raw power, as the Mughal thinks to itself that this timeline might end up like the one they came from after all. Seeing Mateus barely alive and just a normal person with no magic, Jack uses his newfound power to open up a rift and hurl him inside. The Mughal then tells Jack he is to become a god, returning to Chaos Shrine as the group is confident in their mission to become the strongest darkness that guides the brightest light. Though many millennia would pass, eventually a warrior of light would overcome Jack and finally kill Chaos. Struck down with a smile, Jack tells the warrior not to fail him as the warriors of light would indeed prevail and break the chains of time, erasing with it the story of Jack and his comrades as they would bring the world into light again. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin has enjoyed the success of selling over 1.9 million copies worldwide. If nothing else, I love how bold and different they took this story, world, and combat, and wouldn't mind if it is something like this for other Final Fantasy games. Which one do you think would fit the attitude of the style? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next battlefield.